Hello to everyone on my creative tier on Patreon. This is your next tutorial. So for today, what I thought I'd do is do another draw along, much like the horse that I did before. Um, and today we're going to draw a hyena. Um, a hyena from the front on view, so it's not side profile, a front on profile, because that can be a little bit more complicated for some people. Um, so I thought I'd show you kind of a way that you can simplify it, make it a little bit easier so it doesn't seem too scary. Now I'll pop the photo of the hyena in this side of the screen so that you can see this side of the screen at the same time. Um, we'll start off with the kind of main shape of the animal and then when we get to doing details I'll zoom in as we go so you can kind of see the details a little bit better. So as always starting off with my coloured pencil. This is a uh, mechanical pencil. This is a Paper Mate Clear Point uh, coloured pencil. I know you can get them in the US. Um, the UK, I actually got a friend to send me one of these, send me a pack of these, actually send me loads of um, different art supplies from the US. So I know these are available in the US. It's a mechanical coloured pencil, which is great and it's fully erasable as well. So it's, yeah, it's a really great tool um, if you're the kind of person that prefers to use mechanical pencils. Um, obviously you can use uh, erasable coloured pencils as well. So I've got an example here, um, this is the Helix erasable colour pencil. I think they're a little bit harder to find than your normal coloured pencils, so don't, you know, do feel free to use uh, a regular coloured pencil. I'm probably not going to erase it anyway, um, but just in case you're the kind of person that likes to erase, um, there are options out there for you. So, start off with, as always, the head. I'm going in for a circle here at the top. So I think that's a bit small so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a very slight kind of um, estimation for the, the head of the animal first and I'm going to build up the other shapes so we can kind of get the proportions out before we go any further. Um, it, it can be very tempting to start drawing lots of detail here and then expand later. Uh, that's something I have done, I do do sometimes um, and it can get kind of tricky to keep the proportions all together. So what I'm going to do for this one is start with the head and then start sketching out the other shapes of the body at the same time uh, before we go into the details. So the neck kind of comes down this way. I like to put in sort of an overly shape for the neck. Uh, hyenas have got quite thick necks, they're quite muscular. Um, and by the looks of this, their neck is kind of the same width as the head. Uh, so that's just something to kind of give you an idea when you're build, building it up. Now the shoulders, you can do whatever shape appeals to you. What I'm going to do is I'm aware that the shoulder blade falls behind the neck around about here. So I'm just going to kind of extend it down in a overly type shape here, knowing that the shoulders are slightly wider than the neck bring that down like this. You can either sort of finalise it as an oval here, um, you can see where the chest is so you can kind of draw a little line here and then you've suddenly got this kind of flattened egg shape for where the shoulders are and that's where the chest kind of ends and that gives you an idea where you can start placing the elbows. So we know that this is where the shoulders are. We can kind of put in a, a sort of definition for where we know the shoulder blades are. So looking at this sketch, there's kind of a, looking at this photo, sorry, this reference, you cannot see any sort of definition here. Um, but I know from um, anatomy and such, and you know, I encourage you to look at anatomy when you're learning anyway. I will just, out of habit, pop in a curve here. So we've got these kind of two egg shapes or two elongated oval shapes here for where the shoulder blades and the upper parts of the arm are. So that gives you an idea of where the, the shoulder blades are. You can copy this um, as you're going so you can build up that knowledge as well for yourself. So now I'm going to pop in where the elbows are. So the elbows kind of stick out ever so slightly they're kind of attached here, so I'm just going to pop in a very light circle on this part of the body. 
and I'm going to extend those into the forearm, paying attention to where the leg direction is. So you can actually do one thing here, which I um, uh, is a kind of a new technique that I've started doing, um, but it can be quite useful as well. Is placing sort of um, lines of direction for where the limbs are going to go. So you can just pop in a line. That's where one leg goes. And then another leg kind of pivots down here and curves back out again. So that gives you an idea of where the limbs go. And you can now pop all of the rest of the body parts along those lines. So we know that the, the wrist um, falls about here, but I'm gonna just extend, paying attention to the drawing that I've already done, kind of extend the upper arm Paying attention to the shapes. So this one kind of curves out into the chest. This is kind of the armpit here. This is where the elbow and the inner part of the arm is. And I'm going to pop a circle in here for where the wrist is as well. So if you find that I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video at any time so you can catch up or so you can redo things, um, do it at your own pace. There's no need to keep up with me, no need to rush, no need to do anything. If you're not comfortable, just keep it slow, keep it easy and do it at your own speed. So I'm just gonna do this other arm as well, seeing that the curve kind of comes in this way, brings in that wrist. Paying attention to kind of where this wrist is. I can see from the reference photo that the, this wrist is ever so slightly higher up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna draw a little line that kind of intersects here and say that the wrist is a little bit higher up. Just to give yourself a kind of guideline. There's no perfection. So obviously I'm drawing from a reference here but as you go, when you start to draw things from your own memory, you can use stuff like guidelines to just give yourself an idea of where, lim where placements of items or parts of the animal are. So finish off with this elbow up here. And bring it down like so. Now, while I'm here, probably going to just pop on the paws and the, the uh, kind of lower part of the hand of the animal. Extend that down into kind of a rectangular shape. I'm just going to pop a little oval at the bottom. I'm not putting any detail in right now, I'm just popping in the very basic shapes. And the same for this hand. See that the oval's ever so slightly slanted because the ground is slanted. Have it. That's the front part. Now for the body, seeing as the shoulder, because it's face on, the shoulders pretty much block the rest of the shapes or the rest of the body, so we can't really see it in massive detail. But we can have an idea based on, you know, if you've done any study of the, the body, of the animal's body, you know, we've got the shoulders, then we've got the torso. Now that would be basically another circle here. And you can see on this image, the tummy of the animal kind of comes down under here. It extends back round. And that's kind of where the ribs end. So if you want to, you can kind of do that full shape so you know where it is, but obviously paying attention to what you cannot see and what you can see. Now the pelvis of the animal extends from behind the spine, behind the top of the ribs here. And you can kind of draw the upper leg of the back of the animal. And you can see where, on this reference photo, where things kind of intersect. So you can see that the back end of the animal is visible just from behind the elbow. I'm just gonna put a little mark in there. So that's where the kind of um, lower inside of the leg of the, the hyena is. Now this is a nice big shape, so we can just draw the upper thigh. And I'm coming around here, 
that's where the knee is and it extends up like so you have this kind of teardrop shape here this is all abstract and obviously do whatever shapes you know you see and practice for your own self um, but this is the kind of shape that I see when I'm looking at these these reference photos paying attention to the fact that the ribs are probably going to be more visible and essentially most of it will kind of blend away in when we do sort of texturing anyway um, so we're not too worried about the seeing these lines of these shapes anyway they will disappear I'm gonna bring that in slightly I think it's a little bit too wide we could extend that leg as well. So actually, the kneecap, and based with principles of foreshortening, I, I might do a tutorial on foreshortening at some point, um, you're not going to be able to see most of that shin bone because of the, the way the knee and the angle of the photo is. So what I'm going to do is extend that shape ever so slightly with a slightly kind of squashed egg. That's where the shin of the animal is. This, and then the ankle falls behind that again. And then we can do the back leg. So we had, we can, if we do the same line shape that we did before, this is the uh, hip, down to the knee, and then it kind of extends out in a pretty much direct diagonal line like that. Paying attention to where the placement of this foot is compared to the placement of this foot, you can see that it is on the image higher up. So you can see, if you're drawing guidelines, that the wrist of the this front uh, right limb, so the left hand side of this drawing, feels very similar to where the actual back paw ends. So you can use that as a reference. This guideline I popped in before is actually really useful because it places kind of where that back leg is. I'm looking at this shape here. I can see that the knee is a little bit too low for me. So I will do an erase so that you can see what I mean. Now the knee itself, based on the shadow that I can see, more like here shins like this and then that kind of brings up the the ankle as well but like I said a lot of this will disappear when we start adding textures later anyway just gonna pop in where the toes are it's just to give you an idea of how to draw proportions when you've got these guidelines and then you can see that these back two legs also fall on the same guideline. So where the toes end here, the toes of the other back leg are gonna end about here as well. And that gives you kind of a very basic uh, sort of perspective shot. I'm gonna do tutorials on perspective, on ball shortening at some point as well. Um, so I don't have to worry about that too much, but just going off references, here's kind of a straightforward way of getting some simple guidelines in so it's easy for you to copy that image into your own paper. So there's not much you can see of this upper back leg so which makes it kind of I would say kind of easy um, but you can do kind of the shapes as well before as I have done before. So you can see that the kind of heel of the animal comes in in this like curved shape here. And you actually cannot see the actual heel itself but using this curve you can see where the limb is versus where the, the space behind it is. I'm just going to draw this in as well and then do another curve in and bring in those toes. So you have a basic structure like I'm conscious of the fact that this isn't perfect, but it doesn't have to be when you're learning. Obviously this is just for demonstration on how you break down those shapes, and make it slightly easier for yourself. So now, now we've got the basic structure of the entire body, I can start popping in features of the face. Um, I'm not going to put too much detail in because I'll do that in the next stage. But um, what I like to do is I like to draw a guideline down the middle of the animal's face. We can see that the face is slightly off centre. So I'm going to draw this line ever so slightly off centre. 
The middle of the animal's face is actually quite diagonal as well. It's not um, directly straight, it's ever so slightly slanted. So I'm going to draw the line ever so slightly slanted and off centre as well. The muzzle of the animal, I like to draw in an overly shape here. The actual face of the animal is quite square, it's quite angular. You can see that the upper cheek here goes again in that diagonal shape towards the kind of mouth of the animal. And the same up the other side. And the angle of the top part of the head. So you can see it's quite a square shape here. You can use then that shape to kind of pop in the ears. We know that the top part of the ear falls on just near the top of that square. And it goes out in a slight curve. You could just pop in a soft rounded triangle shape here. Do the same for the other side. Bring up that line. Bring in that ear shape there. So we can pop in a rough area for where this, the eyes are going to be. So they kind of fall where these angles are, where these corners are of this square, right along the middle there. And then for the muzzle, we pop the nose. So it's on the centre plane as well of this line that we popped in before. Middle of this nose comes out. And we can draw just another circle centrally on that muzzle shape. Making sure that it's kind of in the middle of this kind of teardrop we've drawn before, just because we'll have the mouth that will come in and the extra features as well. So now we have a very basic structure of our hyena. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of start sketching in with my red pencil bits of areas of shading and then we'll go over with a black pencil or a bit of pen or something so that you can start to see and I'll zoom in on parts of the animal as well so you can see what I'm doing sort of more in detail. So I'm just going to pop in the kind of areas of shading and I'm aware that the ear, for example, is this hoop shape where there's mostly shade and it extends up here. Not being too um, strict right now and I will kind of go in more detail later. Open in ideas of shading, so we've got underneath the chin. There's kind of a line of shadow that goes down the front. I think that's a, that's a lot to do with where the fur parts on the hyena. So I'm just going to draw that in as well. We've got quite nice sort of crescent shapes here. I'm just going to sketch those in. That goes across the chest. And that's for where the shadow falls. And then you've got a bit of shadow where the chest is. We'll go in later and add the detail, the fluff. A lot of this is all fur back here, that you, so you won't see very much in the way of musculature or detail. A lot of it will be just texture and shadow, um, which we'll go into in a bit. Cool, so that's how we got the basic structure. I'm just going to pop in the toes here while, while we're here. Paying attention to the angle of the toe lines. So there we have basic hyena structure. Now I'll go for the next stage, which will be drawing in sort of more specific details. So I'll zoom in and we'll get ready for that now. So we've zoomed in on the face and what I'll do now is start adding the features using this black pencil. So I always like starting with the eyes. I think that's kind of my favorite place to start. The eyes you can see in the reference photo are really round. So I'm gonna use that and make, make sure I kind of pay attention to that, that they are really quite round. 
popped in the upper eyelid. So a little kind of corner of the eye here. Bring down that lower lid here. Now bring in that corner of that eye down here. So for the minute, I'm just kind of going to sketch in the details and I'll go into shading and stuff afterwards. So I'm just going to do the same over this side. I know it can be quite intimidating making them symmetrical, so just take your time, there's no need to rush. Try and get them similar, but of course it doesn't matter if they're ever so slightly different because obviously you're still learning, so that's fine. So kind of got the eyebrow here that comes in, bridge of the nose. I'm just going to pop in a little shape here so I know where the, whoop, that's the pencil. <laughs> Pay attention to where the uh, bridge of the nose is. Bring that down in here. Obviously, because the face is slightly off center, just paying attention to how the shape might differ on this side because of perspective. And I'll bring this down. I'll kind of start shaping that muzzle so we get an idea of where the mouth will fall. So this this line here that comes down here is kind of the the side of the muzzle. And it kind of guides to right where the mouth sits. So, hyenas have very wide mouths. I'm just going to draw that line in here. That's where the mouth opening is. Watching has this kind of rounds to that side of the face here. While I'm here, I'm going to draw that chin in. Very broad, broad animals. Because they're just so muscular and quite powerful. So I'm just going to follow this line up here for where the mouth is, paying attention to that shape because it's not like a straight curve, it's just a slight wiggle here. Of course this is a good time if you are learning how to stylize you can change the shape to exactly how you want. You don't have to be exact to the image because remember even though you're say copying a reference doesn't mean that you have to draw it exactly the same. You can draw it however you want. So I'm also going to draw in the nose. Top of the nose comes in sort of a triangular shape here. It's quite faint, it's quite hard to see, but you can see where the shine of the nose is in, in this reference photo. And that central line comes down here. That's kind of where the bones of the nose meet and there's kind of like a not necessarily uh, opposite of a ridge, like a trench here that the line falls, falls on. I'm going to draw these nostrils in, they've got very big nostrils. So interestingly, hyena, whilst they look like their dogs, are more closely related to mongoose. So there's little kind of ferrety type animals that run around. So there's um, meerkats are also like mongoose. The mongooses, I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah. So yeah, so you can think of these uh, close relatives being a, uh, a meerkat rather than a, a dog. Just drawing in the shape of that nose here, paying attention to where the nostrils go. Very basic shape here. Good. I'm going to do draw in the cheek and then up to the, the ridge here. Because I'm aware that the hyenas have quite coarse fur, instead of just drawing like a very straight line to do the outline, I'm starting to kind of add a bit of texture here. So, kind of perpendicular lines giving that sense of fur. You can kind of see there. Do the same on this side. So, bring in a bit of bristling us and then draw that line down here. 
for the cheek. And what you're doing by throwing in these lines is you're adding in a bit of texture just to make it kind of interesting as well. I'm drawing the top of their head here, very uh, fuzzy, they've got quite a lot of coarse hair on the top. Just using this opportunity to kind of add a bit of texture. This is a chance that you could start shading here as well if you're comfortable to do so. So I'm kind of going in, adding the main shapes, adding a bit of texture, adding some shading at the same time. Bring in that ear shape here. I tend to do quite short little lines when I'm just starting. But you can also, if you're very comfortable, you can do kind of long flowing lines and that kind of makes things look a bit smoother um, and that's entirely up to you really. I'll do it on this side doing long lines. Can make things look a bit, yeah, like I said, a bit smoother, um, a bit more confident. But if you're happy just doing little lines, that's fine. Just the long, long flowing lines can um, just give you a little bit more confidence and show that you're just, I'm just putting that line there because I want to put it there. Be brave. Inside the ear here. So I'm drawing this kind of circle where the, the shading is. I'm just going to throw in some lines here because they're very furry on the inside of the ears. It's all about just adding a bit of texture, a bit of interest. Cool, so that's the face. Now we'll start carrying on and bringing down the neck. So paying attention to the fact that the neck is pretty much as wide as the head. Throwing in a few of those perpendicular lines to show fur. By doing that, you're kind of you're making the line look more interesting. You're breaking that line. You're not making it so harsh, which makes it just it makes the image a little bit softer, makes it more appealing visually. Start adding in thicker lines here and there, just kind of bulking out the line art. Yeah, so that neck looks really fluffy because they are they're quite fluffy, even though the the fur itself is quite harsh. Quite I can imagine quite. Um, coarse. And do the same on the shoulder. A bit of fluff. Bring in the bulk here. Add a bit more fluff down towards the elbow. Also throw in a few extra lines here if you want to. Same on the other side. Paying attention to where the fluffy patches are. Just adding a bit of appeal. So now I'm going to do some of these shaded areas. I'm going to draw in the lines here, adding a bit of texture by breaking that line up. So even though I'm drawing from a reference, I'm just adding my own spin on it. And of course you're more than welcome to kind of mimic this as you learn. That's ultimately why I do these tutorials, because I expect people to want to practice from them. And the more you practice doing it your way, the more likely you are to kind of develop your own style and to make it your, your own kind of unique spin on it. Cool, so that's a bit of shading and texture there. Let's go on to the upper arm. You can see that this, this bit is quite smooth, so I'm just going to draw one line here. And a bit of fluffiness on the other side for where the armpit is. Add some of these texture lines here. This suggests that it's kind of furry. Mm -hmm. 
this bit is quite smooth. So the hair kind of lies flat. It's probably quite short, the hair itself. So I'm still paying attention to the shape of the, the pore. So even though I've got the lines here, I'm kind of looking at my reference at the same time. Back and forth things, so I know that the lines I'm putting in are, you know, fairly, fairly appropriate. I'm drawing the toes. I'm not going to put too much detail on them because you can't really see the detail on the toes of this photo, so I'm not worried too much about it. I'll put my own spin on it later when I come to adding shading. You can see on this reference photo, this part of the wrist continues up. You can see that this bone and shapes curves out like that. And basically this part is the muscle of the upper arm. That just gives you a bit of definition. You can see the same on the other side, so bring in that wrist shape here. You can do a slight continuation of that line up here. Not quite as pronounced because the wrist is twisted. And doing the same on this side and you can see that the elbow gets really fluffy around about here. So I'm just going to throw in some, some texture. This toe end. Again, just kind of popping in where I can see that there are claws. going into masses of my detail at the minute. There. So now that you have these lines in, you can kind of pad them out a bit, add a bit more thicker line here. It's a bit more interesting. Do the same here as well, because it's all weight bearing. It's implying strength by adding thicker lines. There. So now we'll continue with the back end. We'll start off with a bit of a straight line, but I'm going to throw in a bit of texture here as well, just because they're quite coarse and quite thick. Slope down that back, and that lower leg here, the rear leg. Bring in a bit of texture here, because you can't really tell where the, um, the body, you know, kind of turns into ribs to legs, so I'm just going to throw in the texture, just imply that's roughly where the ribs end. Well this is fur down here as well, so I'm just going to pop in some texture. Bring in that knee shape, shin and calf, slope down to the back paw. Even though there are curves and extra shapes here, there's all kind of one straight line, just continues down like that. Pay attention to the toes, they're kind of on the tiptoes at the back end here. You can kind of see that they're slanted, just because of the way that the hyena stood. Just bring in that kneecap here. line here and add in a bunch of fluff and fur here for the tummy area Got that strong line here for the back of the ankle the shin Not too much in. What I'm going to do is when I get around to shading it, I'm probably going to mostly shade this back leg so the really fine details won't matter so much. Anyway, there you go. So you have your sketched out line art. Now, what we'll do next is we'll go into shading. So I'll use the same pencil, I'll give it a sharpen, and then we'll go in and shade everything. So at this stage, when it comes to shading, I like to kind of go with the flow. 
I know what areas are supposed to be kind of darker, but I'm just popping in my cross hatching, which is my favorite way to shade, I think. Um, and now I'm just kind of going where I feel like shade should be. You know, I'm looking at my reference, but ultimately I'm doing it in a way that makes me happy, in a way that makes the image look how I want it to look. So I'm taking the, the cross hatching kind of slow. Um, it's quite a nice way to use it therapeutically. And what I'm doing is paying attention to the kind of the shapes um, of where the the ears fold, where the, the fur lies. I'm using it as a chance to kind of pop in a bit of texture and just darken the areas that are darker. Um, I'm just kind of enjoying it really. So I'll do the eyes, pop in the highlight here. Kind of give an idea of where the pupil is. Pop in some shadow and reflection. Again, so I just draw in the little highlight, draw in the pupil, and then pop in the shadow. The shadow kind of falls at the top of the eye, and it leaves like a little reflection at the bottom. Just gives a kind of depth to the eye. So I like to shade right down the middle. So I'll just turn my angle of my pencil and just draw the lines here for cross hatching. Adding a bit of shadow, aware that there's some texture here. Doing a bit more shadow, cross hatching. You know, you can do whatever shading technique you like. This is ultimately your stylistic choice. Ultimately, that's what I'm doing here is kind of making my own stylistic preferences. And so how I do my shading, if you haven't seen it already, I kind of block in the area that I'm going to shade. So you see there, pop in the eyebrow. The muzzle itself is very dark. So I'm just going to fill in that space here with dark lines. Leaving this area at the top here is kind of a highlighty area, like so. Bringing the cheeks, so you can see I did this curve line here, kind of shade beneath it, and it helps me kind of define that shadow in just my own style, really. So here I've done it again. Draw this line in here. Fill in this shadow. So even though I've kind of got my reference, what I'm actually doing is going off my own kind of preferences, really. Bringing in the shadow. So I'm aware that this is where the fur lies. And there are shadows at this point. I'm not sticking too much to the reference and I'm just enjoying the process of shading. And what I like about cross hatching, especially if you're doing kind of a furry animal like a hyena, is it kind of gives the illusion of fur anyway, it adds a bit of texture, adds a bit of interest. And I think that could be quite fun. So just popping in some shadow here. So I've I decided to leave the pencil a little bit blunt for this time being and then I'm going to sharpen it in a bit when I add a bit more of sort of finer details. So in here, bit of shadow here. Just playing with it. Showing you that even though the reference says one thing, you can ultimately do whatever it is that you like. So for the pores, because they're so much darker, I'm popping the lines quite closely together. Not afraid that I've gone outside the, the line a little bit here. I'm not the kind of person who sticks within lines. Is that a different direction here?
Só tá com. Bring up that line here. Awesome. So because the the rest of the body is a bit further away, I'm probably gonna just shade in most of it, even though it's not quite as dark as that. Lock in this bit of shadow here. Give that light bit of cross hatching. Darken this bit a little bit. And then progressively get darker towards the base of the floor. Now this, this leg is pretty much all in shadow. So I'm just gonna fill in that whole space with some cross hatching. So this would be blocking in some of the shadow. Now I'm gonna do something that I don't tend to do and I think it'd be quite interesting is also smudge it. So I don't have a proper smudger, so I'm just gonna lightly use my fingertip. I'm gonna just smudge that shadow in. I kind of make the shading a little bit softer. So I do love how cross hatching can look, but I think it'd be quite fun to just lightly blend it in with my fingertip. I'm not going to go too crazy and blend it all too much, but just giving like a circular motion, saying that my fingertip is now covered, but that's fine. It's part of it. It's part of being an artist, getting your fingers dirty. And then what you can do, if it got to a point where it's so dark, it's probably not going to be the case in this, in this illustration. But if you decided that you wanted to add an extra layer, so I might show you what I'm talking about here. I'm just going to lightly bring in some shading throughout the whole thing. I've kind of tilted the pencil so it's almost flat. I'm just going to bring in some shadow. I'm going to blend it all up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an eraser and I'm just going to get rid of some of that. So you might not be able to see it so well. It's being kind of selective where I remove the graphite. Kind of bringing up that into sort of highlights. So I always encourage you to be creative and kind of enjoy it and just do whatever makes you happy really. Just play with the graphite, play with the pencil, bring it up. So it's not perfect but you can see that it's kind of raised up those edges to be slightly lighter than the surrounding area. So I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly sharpen my pencil. With a sharper pencil, I'm just going to kind of go over the areas that I want to darken a bit more. So this pencil is only a 2B. You could use something darker, but ultimately it's a stylistic choice. I'm also kind of using this opportunity to go in and thicken some lines. as well to make that front leg stand out a bit more. Do the same on this leg. Bringing out those lines a bit more. Softer. There. 
So I let the hyena draw along, and I realise he's a spotted hyena. Or he or she is a spotted hyena, so I'm just going to pop in some spots. I'm drawing maybe some cross hatching along the fur line. Oh, sticking too much to the reference. I'm just doing what makes me happy. Pulls a bit of darker, darker spots here. Awesome. There. Little hyena draw along. You can do stuff like adding a bit of shadow to the ground, which I'm going to do just to really finish off this illustration a bit. And then you can do whatever you want really. You can add a bit of background, you can add a bit of outside shading here, which I like to do. Kind of makes the image pop out a little bit more. And well, that's up to you really. You can do what your own stylistic choices are. And I hope you enjoyed this little draw along and I'd love to see what it is that you come up with. You know, no matter how it looks, if you've tried it and you want to share it with me, I would love to see it. Um, I'm not sure if you can share it on Patreon, but maybe a photo via Instagram. Um, tag me in it, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see what it is that you create. So yeah. Little hyena. I hope you've enjoyed and I can't wait to see you again for the next tutorial. So I'll see you again soon guys. Bye bye!